Hi, this is Nir from Polypop Live, and today we're going to learn how to automate the switch between our scenes. So you'll be able to create a project with several scenes that will automatically change one after the other, allowing you to concentrate on your live stream. This can be very useful if your live stream setup has several cameras or several inputs that you want to switch between to create a more dynamic or interesting live stream. But you can do it manually because you're doing something else and it can be a game you're playing or uh, maybe you're a DJ or maybe you are playing an instrument and your hands are occupied but you still want your scenes to keep switching. This tutorial will teach you a very simple way for doing that. So let's first simulate a setup with five different cameras. First, let's add a 3D screen by clicking on the plus button in the scene layout panel. Now let's click on the 3D object category Scroll down and double click on the rounded corners one object. Polypop is now asking us to add a texture to the screen we just chose. If you have more than one camera or a game capture you want to add, you would choose that now. Because I only have one webcam, let's simulate a drum setup scenario by using these animal drum playing GIF animations I already imported to my project. So let's select one of them and click OK. Let's make it a bit bigger. We can keep simulating webcams by adding screens the same way we just did, but a quicker way would be to select the screen we already have in the scene layout panel and copy paste it three times. So let's do that. I'm gonna select the layer and press Ctrl C, Ctrl V three times, and we can see that three more layers were added to our scene layout. So if we move them around, we can see that including my webcam, we now have five different screens in our project. Let's change our content by clicking the Open Library button here on the bottom left and choosing whatever source we want to present. For this example, let's use some more GIF animation instead of live webcams. We will see them under images and all we need to do is drag and drop them on the 3D screen we want to see them in. So let's do it with one of these. And here's another one. And our last GIF will be this. Clicking anywhere outside the library, we close the library window. Now let's rename all the layers in our scene layout panel. This will help us organize our project, but it will also be very important for the twin transition we're gonna add very soon. And we can do that by double-clicking the layer in the scene layout panel and type whatever name we want. Now let's create a new scene. Now instead of clicking the plus button in the scene switcher that will create a new scene with nothing in it, let's copy paste the scene we already created. And we can do that by clicking on the scene in the scene layout and pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V. We now have two identical scenes in our project and switching between them will not show anything because they are exactly the same. So let's change that. Let's create a new layout for the second scene, but first let's change its name by double clicking it and call it scene two. And now let's organize it differently. So we now have two scenes with different layouts. This is our original scene one and this is how scene two looks like. Now let's add a repeating alert that will automatically switch between the two scenes. To do that, let's click on the open library button. Now let's click on the plus button and from the drop down menu, we will choose the repeating alert option. A repeating alert layer was added to our library. Selecting the alert layer in the library will show us its properties. And we can see that the interval default is one second, which means that the alert is triggered every one second. For now, let's change it to 60 seconds and we can tweak it again later on. Now let's create an action sequence that will switch between our scenes. To do that, we will pull a wire from the repeating alerts on alert socket and attach it to the action sequence window that appears in the middle of our canvas. We can rename the action sequence by double clicking its current name and type in a new name. And now let's click on the action sequence plus button and choose emit alert from the drop down menu. This will add a new alert to our action sequence. Let's name this alert switch to scene 2 and pull a wire from the alert socket to the scene 2 socket in the scene switcher. This means that whenever the alert is triggered, our project will switch to scene two. Now again, let's click on the plus button in the action sequence window, but this time we will choose a wait alert from the drop down menu. The default wait time is one second, so let's change it to five. This means that after our project will switch to scene two, it will wait five seconds. 
Now let's add another alert to our action sequence that will take us back to scene number one. So again, we will click on the plus button and from the drop down menu we will choose emit alert. Let's name it switch to scene one this time. And now let's pull a wire from the alert socket to scene one. Let's add another five seconds wait by clicking on the plus button, adding a wait alert and change its value to five. Now let's go back to the repeating alert properties and change the interval value to 10 seconds. This will give Polypop enough time to go through all the actions in the action sequence before starting it all over again. Now I didn't show you this before, but I actually made the repeating alert inactive. So let's make it active again by clicking on this toggle button. And now it will fire an alert every 10 seconds. So let's clear the UI so you can see it better. And we can see that our action sequence switches between the scenes every five seconds. We can add a transition to make a more smooth switch between the scenes. To do that, we will click on the plus button here in our scene layout, choose the transition category, and there are many transitions to choose from, but for this example, I think the twin option will give us the best result. So I'm gonna double click it, and we can see that a twin transition was added to our scene layout. And now because we use the same objects with the same names in both scenes, Pop-Up can create a smooth twin transition between them to create a really cool effect. Remember that the project we just created has only two scenes, but you can add as many scenes as you want. I just took a short break and added two more scenes to the project to make it a bit more interesting and you can see that the action sequence is now switching between all four scenes. Also remember that in a real live stream, you'll probably want a longer wait time between the scenes. I made it only five seconds so that the tutorial will be as short as possible. And we're done, this is it. You now know how to use a repeating alert to create an action sequence that will automatically switch between the scenes in your project to create a dynamic live stream while you concentrate on other things. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.